All right, welcome back. Today we're just gonna make it a little simple and I'll try to make this as small as possible, but basically we're gonna be making devlog zero and we're gonna talk about basically how to systemize it, how to structure it, how shall we go with it? So there's no easy way, so let's just start. First of all, I went through some of your comments and most of you guys are asking for like a devlog and some most of you guys actually like three or four of you guys asked for an RPG and then you guys also asked for like a 3D RPG and one of you said you wanted it in C sharp. As you know, for the past years, I've been doing it in both C sharp and C++. In this case, we're gonna be making two different types of game. Uh, one's in C sharp and one's in C++. The C sharp one will be like the RPG type, while the C++ one, I'm thinking more of something like a factory building game, but it's gonna be like a 3D factory building game. So both of them are 3D. Both of them are like third person, first person choices. One's in C sharp, one's in C++, one's an RPG game, and the other one is a factory building game. So I went through some uh, most of your comments in on that post that I asked like what do you guys think and We'll start with that in order to make game You need a game design document and you need a system design document game design document is where you write how the game looks, how the game feels, how you want it done, how you design it, how do you structure it, what's the vibes, what's the colors, the palettes, the audio, all that stuff. So it's the artistic representation of the game itself. A system design document will be the system architecture of how the game structures itself. So this is gonna be the more technical part of it and I'm gonna go more into the technical part. I have been partnering up with ISO Game Lab. So he was the one who messaged me and he said he wants to work on a three the RPG game uh, and then he also said C sharp we already called upon the type of game it is so it's a, a 3d first person or a third person action RPG similar games to it or inspirations could be like Skyrim and Witcher it does have networking because I believe two three of you guys asked for networking so we're gonna add, try to implement the networking later but we will implement it and it's gonna be in C sharp in Unigen now for the other one if we go back here it's gonna be the exact same thing so 3d first person third person with factory building mechanics it's going to be based on satisfactory factorio shapes and a lot of these factory type games but it's more going to be like a third person first person stuff there's also going to be networking and we're going to do pvp or pve in both of them so it depends what type and we're going to talk about it once we get into the networking so for mechanics if you look at games 90 percent of games 95 to 99 percent of the games will always have the same types of mechanics that you have in almost all games so for example every game will have some type of ui some type of audio a character or a user an objectives a database obstacles and network you can either abstract them, so make them a little bit more simpler, or you can make them more complex. It's up to you, but we are writing about the basic. So as you notice, the C Sharp and the C++ have the same amount of mechanics with just a few things here, they're changed. Like for example, are we even gonna have enemies inside the uh, factory building game or not? These are the type of like decision makings that you make in the early game and then you could change it later on. The next thing you're gonna do is actually talk about how we're gonna even implement this. So for an MVP, the first and main step is you wanna build product as fast as possible that goes to the end user. So in our case, it's gonna be gamers. And the fastest way to do it is to build everything that a gamer can use. One is being the user input. So when a user presses a button or a gamer presses a button, he needs a feedback. So a feedback from user input is the highest level of information gathering that you get. And then you could do a play testing as early as possible and you can get that prototype. The next one is an event. When you reach an area, cutscene happens, or when you reach a certain area, uh, the place gets blocked and there's enemy swarm, or a swarming and all these stuff. So these two are the main building blocks of most games. The third one's a supplementary. So these are basically the little things that you connect inside the system to basically help give feedback. You have double jump unlocked and you're trying to jump across like a giant valley or something. So, and we're looking at this from a very business perspective where we want the product to be built, tested, and then modified in the same way that we do like, for example, a CICD type pipeline system. 
So even for the C++, it's about the same thing. The next step is talking about how we can abstract basic mechanics and handlers. So what I mean by that is how we can do specific objects or specific things that we do as a mechanic that we can abstract it into something very simple that we can use over and over again. Our goal is to modulate and make sure that nothing's too unique because if something's way too unique, placing it becomes painful and as a system, you wanna build something that's more modular. Uh, there's no right answer for this, but the way I've seen games and the way I went through some documents, this is the way that uh, most uh, mechanics are abstracted towards. Now, there are more categories, of course, and there are more complexer categories, but if you think about it, those categories are either a branch of these or a connection of these. These are also abstract branches of agency and fun. If you cannot fix the input lag, let's just say the input is very slow, the game's gonna be affected. If the progress is slow, the fun is affected. If the challenge is too hard, it's not fun. Too easy, not fun. There is a very good balance and when you build it off these abstracts and then have them set up on your MVP, you can always go back to that specific mechanic and fix from the inside. Same way in the factory game, we have the same type of abstract mechanics. Now, I believe these are good enough to start a small game and you can scale it up to something bigger. So when we look at the way we're structuring this, we're structuring it based on what I wrote here. Now, this is not to say that this is the golden rule. This is just a rule that you want to put for yourself so that can, you know, become consistent in the way you build. See what you need as concepts, what you require, hold them out to be simple as possible, put them in a system where there they can actually work by themselves brainstorm ideas on how we can make it a little bit more complex while still maintaining that system then prioritize which one to build first and then go build it if you already have a game design document or if you already know exactly what you're going to be doing what you're going to do is then talk about exactly what gameplay loops are inside the game or the project that you want to do and try to write it down mechanic by mechanic based on the mechanics that you have abstracted. So over here, express every little thing that you want inside the project and then slowly build it off the mechanics that you said you wanna build it off. So if you wanna use the same mechanics I have written down here, you are free to do so. If you wanna build your own, you are free to do so. There is no such thing as the golden rule and there's no right answer. This is all based on you and your decisions after you write everything down, you want to write what a gameplay loop is. So a gameplay loop would be exactly what is the character or the player gonna do over and over again, and it's considered fun. So when you do that, then you get to something like this. Isolabs was nice enough to write it on his game design document, so I just copy pasted it. He didn't write like doing a fulfilling quest or anything, because those are more of a different type of doing the same thing. It's basically just doing this with extra steps or doing some of these with extra steps. So you wanna make sure that what you're trying to build is very basic and works, and that's gonna be the basis of your game. As a factory game, you just move around, find an ore, you mine it, get an item, build it to something, use it to build something else, go 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 on until you get like a key build give it to the mission or base in this case complete objective and just repeat so once you're done defining the gameplay loop the next thing you're going to do is kind of flesh out a little bit of what you're expecting from the main mechanic uh have the mechanics stripped out. Over here in the C++ one, you see that we have different types of main mechanics that we're gonna be using inside our factory game. Try to build out or branch out the types of things that that controller should have or should contain. For example, a character should have movement, it should have animation, it should also have an inventory so it can grab things and throw things out. It can have an equipment, so let's say it wants to build a certain thing, it needs to carry it and use it. It can also have interaction between other stuff. And then once you add more stuff, you make it more complex. Same thing over here with a C sharp one, where we have the RPG. Over here, we have the move, animate, inventory, equipment, interaction. I just added a few lines saying that they are somewhat interconnected. So for example, if you move, the animation should do it at the same time. As you can see, once you have a modular system, swapping things out, adding or removing becomes very easy because we have brainstormed it. The last step is going to be prioritizing 
the object. We want the fastest type of prototype. And the first thing is user input. And the first thing a user inputs when he's playing an RPG is inputting for a character movement. So what we can do is we can build the character first. So what you want to do is basically go back into how the playing the game would look like, go back into the mechanics and the gameplay loops and basically the actions and you want to flesh out what it means to move normally and what it means to move like combat or what it doesn't mean to craft recipes in our case or what does it mean to have a ranged weapon and then basically you just build another one where you kind of go into detail so for example for our example a character with normal movement requires a walk a jump crouch running and rolling once you do fully build out or flesh out the brainstorming session, this is just a very important when you prioritize stuff. You don't have to draw it with colors and make it even more detailed, but this was just an example to show. There's no right answer. As I said before, this is all up to you and your decisions. So you can do it like that. So once you build out the systems for each mechanic and each type of controller, the next thing you want to do is use an architecture to structure how you want to handle these data go over the main architectural patterns that we have nowadays and see where it fits where so for example the mvc controller if we go into our c sharp i mean a c plus plus factory game we can see that there is an mvc controller based on an example like a database that is the model the view having to be the UI, the user interface, and then the controllers being the controllers. So you get like the information of characters from the database, the machine and the vehicles, and then you put it in the user interface. Uh, you can also have ECS because Unigine and Unity are pseudo ECS. So basically they do follow somewhat of a hybrid approach of an ECS. It's not purely one, but you can definitely see it built. If you notice MVC and ECS also have almost the same type of architecture where there are three parts three part pieces that help each other out and there's a little bit of caveats in each one of them you also have the components which unigen relies on a component based uh, architecture especially when you see like c sharp and c plus plus with the new properties and components a client server works amazingly well if you're doing anything in in the network or internet event state is an architectural pattern that you can use on almost anything uh, based on triggers and stuff you can even have something on a state kind of have to like wing it based on where you want to put it so with that in mind we can see that there are some structures here and there in my opinion the best thing we can do is build out some of these as components and then after that try to connect them using uh, architectural pattern from all the architectural patterns the component and the state pattern are the only ones that are not connectable architectural patterns meaning that all the other ones are based on how you connect but for now i'm going to call this as the end of devlog zero where we actually discussed about the architectural pattern the next step is actually going to be building some of these characters database or these controllers trying to technicalize them on a uml diagram or just build it straight into framework or a skeleton into the project and then from there try to read out and see what it works now you might say that this is a lot of uh, technicalities and writing too much but this ensures that you don't repeat yourself this also ensures you don't make mistakes in terms of like when you want to swap things out or when you want to add things in that it doesn't really ruin the structure of the code that you're building and the next episode is going to be either two weeks in or three weeks in or a month in but we'll definitely talk about how we build a skeleton and discuss how we basically structure and then from there we'll go on to actually building the game so with that i will see you guys next time goodbye <laughs>